Today we'll look at how to run a NASTRAN Solution 103 response spectra analysis. It has a number of different applications where we have a transient load on a structure. The excitation is applied as a function of frequency, which will generate a peak response in the structure. It provides an efficient way to conservatively predict the peak response. For the demonstration, we'll pick up from where we left off from an earlier video where we ran a random base excitation on an electronic box since we can reuse the same model setup to create a new Solution 103 response spectra solution. First, we'll edit the output requests in the case control section. Since we only want displacement, stress, and strain, let's go ahead and get rid of our SPC force and turn on our strain. That looks good. Next we'll go into our modal parameters and create a new Lanchos card to specify 50 modes. And then we'll also specify our modal damping with a critical damping factor of 2%. And lastly, we'll go into our bulk data parameters where we'll specify no comps to equal zero, which will get both ply stresses as well as equivalent stress. Setting it to one only gets us the ply stress, which is default. All right, next we'll edit our subcase to specify some response spectra options. And we want to specify our modal combination method as SRSS. All right, now that we've created our solution, let's go ahead and bring in our glue that we had specified in our previous video. We'll create a new fixed constraint And before we can specify our excitation load, we're going to bring in a shock pulse from a field file. And this field file has not only the shock pulse, but also the correct units for the pulse. And here we can take a look at that. It also includes the damping and the frequency and acceleration. And we can plot that. And see our shock pulse function. So this is what we'll use for our response spectra excitation load. Here we'll specify where we want it and in what direction. And then we'll select our field that we just imported. All right, so at this point, we're ready to solve. I'll go ahead and pause the video. But you can see it only takes uh, less than 20 seconds to solve. Now we need to be careful when viewing our results because only the component results for displacement are valid. So X, Y, or Z. So let's take a look at the Y component displacement. And similarly with the stress results, only the individual stress components, X, X, Y, Y, and so on, as well as the von Mises stresses are valid. The principal stresses, which are peak stresses that occur at a certain angle within the element, are derived from component values and have very little or no meaning for shock spectra. Response spectra analysis predicts the overall responses, that is, the maximum possible given a certain shock excitation. The response prediction 
since it's conservative, ensures that the design based on it will survive the shock loading. For this simulation, we only had uh, an excitation in one direction. However, we could have added additional subcases with excitations in additional directions. Here we can also see our strain results. And this is how to run uh, shock response spectra analysis in SimCenter 3D.